JF Stretford Paddock, Manchester United have beaten the mighty Ammonia 3-2 over in Cyprus. With us is Stephen Alson for his review. Steve, they don't get much better than that, do they? Uh, we Come made on. hard work of it, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. What just we, we made hard work of it. What did you think of it when you saw the team, first of all? Did you think this is gonna be easy? Because I'm not gonna lie to you, I no, did. No, I didn't, because I knew you're playing against Neil Lennon. Right? You know exactly how this is gonna go down. And he he tried to make it go down like that. To be fair, we created a lot more a lot earlier than I thought. Um but then when they scored, you're like, no, when you're playing against teams at low block, giving them that goal just completely shuts off any hope of them even leaving their box now, um, which ironically is, is where they kind of scored from. We had all of our players in the final third, which I think Malassia has ended up being a bit of a scapegoat for, but I've got to put it on the whole team. It's far too adventurous at nil-nil in the first whatever minutes of the game it was to to go the entire team in their third. No no safety whatsoever. And there's you know, zero attempt. Like you, you have to factor in the best defensive weapon you've got, which is offsides, right? If you're all in their half, you haven't got that. You need to have a line. You can maybe go five or six yards inside their half. But you've you know not mentioned it on my live stream. It's Bashek Shear all over again got far too forward and, and giddy and, and you've always got to have one eye on the worst case scenario and that's what your two centre halves are meant to be there for you can flood forward with the other eight outfielders but you need at least if they leave one forward you've got to leave two back that's it they're, them's the rules and they're unbreakable yeah I mean you mentioned Malassia and he got subbed again you know second game running at half time are you worried about him at all do you think he might need a bit of a breather or do you think this is just you know he's it's going to take a bit of getting used to playing for Manchester United and maybe, you know, we've, we've sort of expected too much too soon from a player who, yeah, you know, maybe, I mean, bagging you know, money. I don't, um, I don't think he's played poorly. Like, he made a mistake. Could he have done better? Probably should have fouled him, yeah. realistically. From the position he was in, just fucking bring him down. What you're going to get in those circumstances, probably might not even get a yellow. Yeah. In the worst case, like one third into their half on a counter... The worst cases are yellow. The literal, they're not going to send you off unless you've two foot him in the nose. You're, you're getting a yellow card there. You take the yellow card, and the gaffer says, "Nice one, lad." At half time, like that's all you can do in those circumstances. He got hung out to dry by the rest of the team. That's on the rest of the team. That your defenders a team, your attackers a team. And I think he got hung out. His crossing wasn't the greatest. He was a little bit long with some of his crosses. A little bit inaccurate with some of his crosses. But I don't think he's played poor. And when I think, you know, I thought. Someone who's had an excellent season for us this year is Ericsson. He looked off the pace today. He looked a little bit jaded, a little bit sloppy. Um, low blocks are hard to play against. Did anyone look mint, really? I mean, even Marcus was effective, probably should have had that trick. You know, was setting people up as well as taking his own chances and his own shots. I still don't think he was electric. No. He was all right. I think he was all right. Same with Marshall. Come on, bagged. Sweet. Definitely staking a claim to be a starter. But who played, who do you go? Like, who was your man of the match? Because honestly, I'm like, maybe Mark. Like, yeah. No one really was like, Jesus, he, how good was he today? No one. Mark, it felt like Marcus, when he got, I think it was his first goal, it was almost like it showed you the level of the opposition that he miscontrols it, but still is able to get it back and get his shot off and score. Because he looked, actually, these aren't that good. We've just made <clears> them look a little bit better than they are. That's how it felt to me a little bit. Yeah, and when you when you attack so with so many numbers and you defend so high up the pitch, anyone can concede in those circumstances. And it's you know low blocks and hitting people on the counter like we try to do at City and failed. Um, <laughs> they can work. You know they can work. And you know for half an hour or whatever it was today, it looked like it was working for Neil Lennon. And you know he's spent an entire career playing like that. Um, there's a lot of comments and talk about Jaden Sancho. People looking into this game and just saying, you know, what's happening with him? He doesn't quite seem even as good as he did early on in the season. Is he is that a concern to you at all? Do you think you can't really look too much into this performance? Well, it's a bit of a blip in it. Again, it's very hard to look good against low blocking teams. And it's very hard for wingers to look good um if they're not scoring or assisting. When when was the last time a winger you went, oh what a game he had, but he didn't score or assist? Never. 
really. Yeah, not it's a very hard to do as a, as a winger to do that. So, um, you know, people are now comparing his numbers and what he got at Dortmund, the impact Haaland's having. Haaland's coming to a team of the champions. You know, we're in our rebuild with a, a new manager that's been here two months, three months. Like, <clears throat> the lack of patience is frightening from people. Things take time. And they take even longer when you're playing twice a week. 100%. Um, Ronaldo, obviously, dominating headlines, or I presume he's going to dominate headlines, certainly dominating social media. He, do you think, this is this the end of Cristiano Ronaldo? I know that sounds like a proper melodramatic statement, but he's 37, and it's not very often he has a consecutive number of bad games he's having. Do you think he could be getting towards the end now, or do you think this is just, you know, the old saying, form is temporary, class is permanent? No, I think this is a crisis for him at the moment. I, I think that... I don't think you can discount the things that have happened in his personal life. I don't think you can discount the lack of a preseason. I don't think you can um, discount the loss of a child. I don't think you can discount the probably bollock, kicking the bollocks that his ego got over the summer with nobody wanting him. Yeah. Um, the fact that he's been benched by two players who can't stay fit. Um, I think all of those things would impact anybody's game. He had opportunities today that you think even not no not on his peak Ronaldo puts some of them away. <clears throat> but if there's any player that I believe in that I know will be doing everything. You know, we saw a photograph of him with Jordan Peterson. Now, supposedly, he was actually working with him and not just doing a podcast with him. Um, so that tells me that he's going looking into clinical psychology. You know, he's going looking into reasons why things aren't firing for him this is a guy i genuinely believe you know how many times we joke that he, he sleeps in pink glue right <laughs> we would have no idea like, like he would because you believe it because you know the lengths he would go to yeah you know this is a guy that i believe in and i believe he will be doing everything that a human being has ever done to get the maximum out of their performance and i believe in him to do that yeah. now whether or not that is enough I don't know. I have no idea. Like I said, I just think that if he, if anyone can do it, if there's any striker in world football that can get over the things that he's just got over and rediscover some form, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. But he is in trouble right now because Anthony Martial has come off the bench twice, found the back of the net, looked bright. His overall performances look better than those that Cristiano was giving us. And if Eric Ten Hag picks on form, which is what he seemingly does, Cristiano Ronaldo is going to find himself on the bench again. Seems about right, bro. Um, just finally, if you're Eric Ten Hag, you're looking at today and you're and looking at today and going towards the game at Goodison, are you looking at it as a positive tonight or are you going to the lads, you know what, you need to fix up because we've just scraped a win against a load of, you know, not amateurs, but not very good footballers? You, you can't discount the cup final factor. Yeah. But Manchester United have got to have higher expectations. And in the group that we're in, second isn't going to be enough. So what we need to do, or we needed to do, was probably to put some goals behind them today so that if we can manage to get a result against Sociedad away, we finish top of that group. Now you're hoping that not being the case, maybe we can rack some goals up against them at Old Trafford next week. A week after, whenever it is. Yeah. Um, or Sociedad can drop a ball and scrape a draw somewhere. And if that doesn't happen, we finish second. We get an extra game or an extra tie, which we don't need. Yeah. And I have no, like, we've got Premier League games we've got to catch up on, let alone extra games in Europa League. <clears throat> um, so I would say you need to address that we dropped a ball tonight. But the most important thing and the thing you'll be judged on, we know that as much as we enjoy winning trophies, the owners don't actually give a toss. What they care about is where you finish in that league. Um, we won an FA Cup, which I'd love to win. But we sat the manager that yeah. won that a few years ago. So Ten Hag has to prioritise league football, which means we have to be Everton. Because I know they've started picking up some form, but Lampard's shit and they're missing players. You have to go and beat them. You have to go beat them. Yeah. 
if yeah. we can't beat Everton, we're in trouble. Because there's no way Manchester United should be looking at this Everton team, which nearly got relegated last year, but was at least you know in the conversation for a team that could have been relegated and not turn them over. Varane's a miss. If you need Varane to beat Everton, you fucked up a long time ago. You know, I think that might be more of a game where you actually see a bit of Casemiro because I think you know, there was no midfield battle today. It was either we were on the attack or they were twatting it long. There was no battle for him to join. It's not really the game for him. So I'd like to see him against Everton. Um, and, I, and I'd like to see United just roll the clock back a couple of weeks to when we look like we actually had some ideas. Uh, it's been a rough week for United fans, hasn't it? It has, it has, brother. Hopefully, though, yeah, we can get into Frank's toffees anyway because I'm with you. I don't rate him much as a manager and I don't rate them much as a team. But, you know, after what we've seen tonight, I'm not feeling that confident. Who knows? We'll see anyway. Stay. Always a pleasure, my friend. I'll see you on the brew. Hey, we, we play like we did tonight and we're yeah. getting turned over. I Make know. No I, can't, I can't be watching uh, Alex Uobe and bloody, who's the other one? Neil Mopai and, you know... Who's that one who wears his socks around his ankles like he's Tom Jack Grealish? Tom Day. I, I can't watch them lot scoring goals past us, bro, as I'm done, honestly. The, 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 the shit. <laughs> Cheers, Tag me when you've clipped it up. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know where to find Stephen Housen. Stephen Housen TV He's on this channel as well, so make sure you subscribe to his channel and this channel. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe, of course. Thanks for watching.